praise the Lord. Are you thankful to be in the house of God this morning? Welcome to the 10 a.m. service. Thank you. 
Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. It's so great to be in God's house today. It's beautiful outside, but it's more beautiful inside his house. To be in a place of his presence, his protection, his strength, his power, his glory. It's all here. Whatever you have need of today, you can walk out of here with whatever you came in need of. That's the God we serve today. I'm so thankful, so thankful that we serve a living God a great and living God that is interested in us. He's interested in us. Point to yourself. God's interested in me. Make it personal. He's interested in me. It's easy to look around and say, well, yeah, God's going to do something for them and them and them. But it's for me. God, God came to this earth for me. And he wants to make sure that I get to spend eternity with him. What a great God we serve today. Praise God. Thank you for being in the house of God today. A little bit different format, uh, but we are going to welcome Dr. Jennifer Williams to the platform at this time. She is going to bring the word. So excited about her being here. She is a very well-educated woman, but most importantly, she's a very anointed woman. That's that's what really counts. Praise God. But when you when you combine education and anointing, it's just unreal. But we had a wonderful time, uh, my wife and I, with her uh, yesterday evening, uh, just um, sitting at the sitting at the Mexican restaurant, and the spirits set in, and the Holy Ghost set in, and uh, I don't know what people may have thought, but uh, ho- hopefully, hopefully the Spirit drew them. So, but we're just we're so delighted to have her here with us today, and it is a treat. She hails from Alexandria, Louisiana. Uh, she is a member of the Pentecostals of Alexandria. Uh, many of you know their pastor, Anthony Mangan, and uh, she is going to just deliver what God has given to her. Thank you so much, Sister Williams. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, let's give God some high praise in the house this morning. Come on, make him known in your presence today. Come on, let's make him known today. Hallelujah. Every single time we encounter the presence of God, The number one thing we have to do is to respond to him. Not every second time, every fifth time, or every tenth time. But every single time we encounter the presence of God, the number one thing we have to do is to respond to him. And when we respond to him, he will respond to us. I don't know what you brought in this house today, but the power and presence of God can handle it. It's my distinct honor to be with you. I'm thankful for these great leaders that we have. Give them a hand clap today. This beautiful church that we are in. So thankful for that. But my assignment from the Holy Ghost today is to serve notice on hell and let him know that his time is up. He can no longer come into this house and do whatever he wants to do and think that you're going to go home the same way that you have come. Folk are tired of going to church one way and leaving the same way that they have come. They are ready for a radical 
change from God. They are ready for the supernatural moving power of God's spirit to come into their lives. to know where you are in the spirit in order to be able to make advancement. In the spiritual realm today, I can tell you that God's eternal eyes is focused on this place. And before we leave here today, this service and the next service, God's about to show himself in a powerful there is something that has descended upon me from the heavens of heavens and I can hardly contain myself. We will not have church as usual today, but we are going to have church according to the will of the Lord. See, what the enemy wants me to do is to come here, teach you a little Bible story, and let you go home. That's not my assignment. My assignment today is to give you what thus saith the Lord. All nine spiritual gifts that you have read about in the Bible, in the book of Corinthians, you're going to see that demonstrated today before you leave here. The God of the Old Testament that opened the Red Sea for Moses, you're going to see him manifest himself today. The same God that shut the lion's mouth for Daniel, he's going to come in your midst today. How bad do you want it? How much of him do you want? I don't think you're hearing me today. How much of him do you want? We've got some young people in this house. They have been waiting on a supernatural demonstration from God. We've got some kids here in their single digits that'll be used by God if they will yield to the Spirit today. It's time for a change. And it's time for us to see the power of God in our lives in a greater dimension than we've ever seen it before. I believe today Whatever you want from God, you can get it. Whatever you want from God, you can get it. Let's go into the Bible for a few moments. I will be mindful of the time because we will have a second service. And I have other things to do in that service. But we're not going to waste this one. How many of you need something from God today? How many of you are ready for a change? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Do you know the book of Jude is only one book, one chapter? It says your most holy faith is built up when you pray in the Holy Ghost. It means every single time you start praying in the Spirit, your faith will start rising. How many of you have already received the Holy Spirit? Let me see your hands. Put your hands down. How many have not received the Holy Spirit? I'm about to get into the Word. Are you brave enough to say it? Lift your hands if you've not received it as of yet. Put your hands. I see some hands in here. I see some hands. In this service, you can receive it. If you already speak with tongues, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's get let's set the atmosphere. I'm going to deliver the word, but I want to charge the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Katia the Rabba. Ayando rebo shia tarababa shakata. Ayando lo loki andere lo koshi andere la lo koshata. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Have your way in this house today. Mighty God, Mighty God, Mighty God. Haya taraba. You can feel it. The atmosphere is already changing. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of James, chapter number 5, I call your attention to verse number 16. Only the last sentence will I read this morning for the subject today. Very familiar portion of scripture here. James writes in James chapter 5, verse number 16. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. It avails much. When you are effectual and you are fervent and you are righteous, your words will avail. It's an ingredient to get in your prayers answered right there. The Old Testament, 2 Chronicles, verse 7, chapter 7, verse 14. By people, who are we? His people. If my people, which are called by my name, how were you baptized? Called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. There's that word again, prayer. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Forgive your sins and heal your land. Lord, my land needs to be healed. Just for a few moments today, I want to speak to us on this subject. The prevailing power. The prevailing power of prayer. Let us pray. Father, first time in this great city, in this great church, with these great leaders, and with your great people. No pretense, I come today to be your mouth, your hands, your eyes, your ears. Come today just to be a vessel that the people can hear the word. They can receive the word. And you can be blessed by the word. Use us today. Don't just use me, but use us as your people today. There are people in this house today that need to be filled with your spirit. Fill them today for your glory and for your name's sake. Clap your hand and give him some high praise. some dreams and you've been thinking I don't know how it's going to take place when it's going to take place or where it's going to take place but I speak to you this morning and I tell you that the time is now and the place is here every mighty move of the Spirit of God has had its origins in the prayer chamber. Prayer can do anything, all things, and everything. Prayer can do what God can do. Prayer moves God. Prayer moves God's hands. 
and God's hands move the world. If a man can pray, he can do anything. If women pray, they can do everything. If children pray, things can happen. Prayer is the power on earth that moves the power in heaven. Prayer is the power on earth that moves the power in heaven. Prayer has no tombstone. Your prayers will never die. How are you going to come out of the situation that you're in? I have your answer today. You can pray your way out. No generation escapes the need for prayer. The circumstances in every generation bring about an urgent need for people to pray. In the book of Leviticus, chapter number 6, verse number 12, the Bible says the fire upon the altar shall be burned out. I'm talking about prayer this morning. Prayer is simply talking to God. Just like you talk to your wife, you talk to your husband, you talk to your employer, you talk to your co-workers, you can talk to God. Because prayer is simply talking to God. Giving yourself to God. At an altar. What is an altar? An altar is just an established place where you meet him. Your car could be your altar. Your truck could be your altar. Your kitchen table can be your altar. The closet in your bedroom can be your altar. Every man of God have had an altar in their life. They had an established place where they met God because there is the place where things will change. If you want to get up and change your world, get up and build you an altar. You want to change the dynamics of your marriage, get up and get to you an altar. If you want to change your finances, find yourself an altar, a place where you can commune with God. God have always desired for mankind to commune with him. He came to Adam in Genesis chapter number one and two. You read in even chapter number three where he was looking for this man. He created man in his image and he created this man to commune with him in the altar. It was the cool of the day. That was Adam's altar. Where is your altar? Every man of God must have an altar in his life. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12 said, And the fire on the altar shall be burning, and it shall not be put out. And verse number 13 says, And don't let it go out. Don't put it out, and don't be so lazy where you let it go out. We got to have an altar in our lives. There's been great awakening without great preaching, but there's never been great awakenings without altars. There's been revivals without great preaching and great teaching, but there's never been revivals without altars. Even the apostles knew the importance of prayer. Look at Acts chapter 6, verse number 4. We will give ourselves. What are you giving yourself to? We will give ourselves. Some people give their life to golf. Some folk give their life to tennis. Some folk give their life to their jobs. What are you giving your life to? Abraham was a man of prayer. He was such a man of prayer and gave himself to prayer before he would destroy Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, I'm going to talk to my friend who's been talking to me. See, God will commune with you if you will commune with him. So the apostles said in Acts chapter 6, verse number 4, we will give ourselves continually to pray into the ministry of the word. What are you giving yourself to? Are you giving yourself just to education alone? Education is fine, but we cannot forget about God and time with God. 
Are you giving yourself just to your job alone? Your job is fine. It's going to pay the bills. But you just can't live your life for your job. You've got to give yourself to God. And it's going to take a made up mind. Touch your mind today. I'm building on something because when we step into this next service, you're going to see something. You're going to see some things this service. But I'm building you up for this next service. You got to get your mind in the game. What's going on in the world today? People's minds are so messed up. I am a mental health clinician. I am a licensed professional counselor in the city of Alexandria. I've seen hundreds of thousands of people with a mind. Everything is hinged on your mind. When you make up your mind that you're going to pray, then you are going to pray. And it always starts small. I'm not asking you to start praying five hours and 10 hours a day. Just start with five minutes. Then go to 10 minutes. So you got to build it up. Then you got 30 minutes. Then you have an hour. There are some times when I get into prayer, I pray three, four, five hours. It feels like 30 minutes. Why? I just been building it up. You don't have to start way up there. Start small. Give God five minutes of your time. Give God 10 minutes of your time. And more you encounter him, you're going to begin to become like him. The, I'm telling you, when you get into God and the presence of God, you're going to become like him. You want to be closer to him and become like him? Go into prayer. But it's going to start with the mind. Allow me to build this for you today. Every dimension of spiritual possibility is dependent on your mindset. When a mindset is fortified by evil spirits, then you're going to have a stronghold. But if it's fortified by God, you're going to have the power of God to take down strongholds. We've got to get our mind in the game. When we understand that our minds fixed on God can change our world, then we will spend more time with our minds on God and in prayer. The mindset is so critical when it comes to prayer. Focus your mind on God. How can I do that, Sister Jennifer? I pick up the word. And when I opened the word, I started reading the word. Even if I don't know how to pray, open the word and start praying the word. The word is a prayer book. If you're sick, pray Isaiah 53 and 5. If you're lonely, go into the Psalms and begin to pray the Psalms. If you don't have a, a way out of a situation, begin to pray Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. God has given us the rule book. He's given us the playbook. He's given us the instruction book. See, the enemy have lied to us too long where you don't know how to pray. You don't have to know how to pray. I've got the best way to pray in my hand every day. All I have to do is open up this Bible and begin to pray the word. I don't even need my own words to pray. Whatever situation you're in, there's a prayer in the Bible for it. But it's dependent on your mindset. Every dimension of spiritual possibility is dependent on your mindset. The reason why you got to get your mind in this game is because the mindset is the avenue and the access to the spirit. If you're going to get into the spirit, you must manage your mind. I've been teaching on this. How do you manage your mind? I've got to get the scripture in there, and then I've got to guard my gates. The only way Satan can get to you is by two gates, and two gates only, your eye gate and your ear gate. That's why you have to be careful what you're looking at and be careful what you're listening to. So I've got to guard my eye gate and my ear gate to make sure it's not polluted so I can get into prayer and be effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. See, we have to realize that we have an adversary. I'm using this as a teaching to set us up for the next service. You have an adversary. When you go into the Bible and you look in the Bible, you find out that you have an adversary, and his name is Satan, and he's seeking whom he may devour. He's not your little chum chum buddy. 
He's not your friend. He's not somebody you can walk around and talk to and share your secrets with. He is an adversary. He's out to get you. The Bible calls him a deceiver and a liar. When you look into the Bible in John, John chapter 10, verse number 10, he said, I have come, Jesus Christ said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But this devil, he have come to steal, kill, and destroy. Are we together today? You don't have a friend in Satan. I want this to be said again. You don't have a friend in Satan. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. Every day before God, he tells God what you're doing wrong. I don't care how much you do right, he's going to tell God what you're doing wrong. So he's walking around seeking whom he may devour. That scripture tells us he's not going to get everybody, but whom he can, he is going to get. So you can't be about your time with God just on Sunday, but you forget God on Wednesday. You can't be about it on Tuesday, and you forget about him on Thursday. You are dealing with a full-time devil. He is working 24 and a part-time prayer person will never defeat a full-time devil. We've got to get full-time on our mission in prayer for God. Why do we need prayer? Because prayer empowers us with the Spirit of God. He told the apostle, you go back into the city of Jerusalem and you tarry until you are endued with power from on high. We alone as human beings do not have the power to overcome Satan. So we have to be endued with this power from on high. How are we endued with this power from on high? It's from the prayer chamber. It's from my time with God. Something from his spirit must touch something in my spirit. See, what the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to be without the spirit. But it's nothing that is done without him. He is before all things, according to Colossians, and by him all things consist. So how are you going to gain this power? This power of prayer. Prayer is the most simplest thing that you can do. Prayer is the most simplest thing that you can embark upon that will bring forth great results. But it's going to have to be consistent to produce the results. It's going to have to be on a daily basis to produce the results. Do you know that the Holy Spirit uses the power of prayer to change the world. You say, well, God can change by himself. See, this is the thing with God. He positioned us to where we can't do it without him, and he won't do it without you. You can't do it without him and the power of prayer, and he won't do it without you. But when you partner with God, all things are possible to him that will pray. All you have to do is partner with him and begin to pray and begin to seek his face and begin to commune with him and begin to go into a relationship with him. And he will begin to change your world. Prayer can make the sick heal. It can cause unclean spirits to come out. It'll make the lame walk, the dumb talk. The dead will come to life again. It will shake kingdoms, overturn oppression, defeat depression. It's all in the power of prayer. That's why Romans 8 and 22 says the whole world is groaning for the sons and daughters. I'm paraphrasing this to rise up and pray. But it's not going to come easy to you. 
You're going to have to fight for your prayer time. You're going to have to fight for your communication with God because you've got this devil, 1 Peter 5 and 8. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because you have an adversary, the devil, that's walking about seeking whom he may devour. You think the devil going to let you pray easy? He's going to make sure your children act up. He's going to make sure that you don't have some type of issue where someone is not going to be pleased with you, your job. He's going to put something in your way to stop you from praying. But if you'll start that prayer, according to Acts 1 and 8, you're going to receive some power when this Holy Ghost come upon you. Most theologians tell us it took them about 7 to 10 days before they got into this place before the Holy Spirit fell. But when they did, it was something of a lifetime. I never knew the power of prayer until I started praying. I never knew that if you didn't have the right last name, so much money in the bank, right friends, that you could come into a place of prayer. Pastor Anthony Mangan, Nikki Mangan, started picking me up on a bus route when I was eight years old. I encountered the power of God at eight years old, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was baptized in Jesus' name at 14. But by the time I turned 15 years old, I was so rebellious, you wouldn't want to stand in the room with me. I started cursing people out, lying, drinking alcohol, hanging out with people on the corners of the street. By the time I turned 18 years old, I had a child out of wedlock, and my life just continued to spiral down, down, down. I started dating a guy, and the guy said he was going to kill me, and I was crying, and I was saying, I don't want to be dead. And he started choking me around my neck, and I was within one inch of breath in my body. But the only thing that I could do was return back to an altar where I had met God. I had to return back to prayer where I had met God. See, sometimes you may find yourself in a situation where you don't have a whole lot of time to pray long prayers. So while he was choking me around my neck, the only thing that I could cry was Jesus! Because Jesus is a one word prayer. You don't have a whole lot of time to pray sometimes. But he kataba. Ayita rabba he kataba. You don't tell me that the prevailing power of prayer doesn't work. It worked for me and I'm alive today. Whatever situation you found yourself in, prayer can bring you out of it. Prayer can bring you through it, and prayer can bring you to it. My life was so messed up. See, you're looking at the glory today. But I just ripped the veil to tell you the story. Some folk look at people all in the pulpit, doctorate degrees and all, then they think they've been good all their little lives. But that's not my story. See, hell understands I well know what prayer would do. I went back to church not long after that, and I made my way back to God. And I began to pray, and I said, If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, take my feet, touch my mind. I'm so messed up in my mind. If you can use, that's why I know he can heal your mind today. If you need a mind regulator, he can regulate your mind. I was broken in so many pieces. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. I was broken in so many pieces, but the power of prayer began to put my life back together again, piece by painful piece. (laughs) 
Mahakataba. And our prayer simply is, it's talking to God. God, I can't live this life. I don't, I don't even know how to live, God. Lord, I don't even know how to pray. God, I need you to help me. Lord, I need you today, God. If you just touch my mind and I can have some peace today, God. Lord, I'm living in fear, God. I've got so much fear and anxiety and worry and stress, God. I don't know what to do, but you said I can look to you. You said I can look to the hills from which come my help at, and all my help come from the Lord. Lord, you are the maker, God. Lord, I don't know what to do, but if you will help me today, I can make it through today. Oh, God, I ask you today, God, to be my light, oh, God. You are the strength of my life uh, and the life of my strength, oh, God. You are my light and my salvation, oh, God. Father, I'm praying right now today, oh, God, that you will heal me, God. Oh, God, I pray today that you will touch me, oh, God. Oh, I need you. Oh, how I need you, oh God. You said if anybody would come to you, God, you wouldn't turn them away, God. And God, I know, God, I'm broken and I'm all messed up. But if you would help me, God, and put me back together. God, I don't have to be in this pulpit. I don't have to be on the praise team. If you just let me clean the church bathroom, I'm okay, God. If you would just let me just be able to sit on the pew and feel the presence of God, oh, Lord, I will be okay, Lord. I just need you today. That's how simple prayer is. And I begin to pray my prayers to the Lord, and the Lord heard me. Let me tell you something. When we begin to pray our prayer, to the Lord. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you have been. I don't care how long you have been in it. There is a powerful working of the Spirit when you begin to pray that can change your life. It can change your mind. I can't Prayer saved the nation of Israel through one little girl called Esther. She said, you go and you fast three days for me. Prayer saved the nation of Israel again through a teenager by the name of David. He looked at that giant after he had been praying with God on the backside of the mountain, killing the lion and the bear. He looked at that big giant and said, you come to me with the spear and the sword. And I'm coming to you in the next. He didn't wait till the giant came to him. He was a man of prayer. His prayer stopped the mouths of the lions that Daniel and quenched the fire for the Hebrew boys that were thrown in it. And prayer can change it for you. In the Old Testament, Moses erected a tabernacle. In the tabernacle, they had one interest. Then they got to the brazen altar where they offered the sacrificial lamb. From that brazen altar, 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 which was the biggest piece of furniture in the tabernacle, that's where they offered the spotless sacrifice. We are to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Everything, that altar was the biggest piece of furniture. Everything in the tabernacle fit on the inside of that altar. Everything in your life is supposed to fit on the inside of your altar. Where is your altar? Where is your prayer? Everything in your life fits in it. Everything in your life is governed by it. Ian Bounds said, little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. But much prayer, much power. He further said, man is looking for methods, but God is looking for man through the power of prayer. God's looking for you today. From that big piece of furniture, they went to the brazen altar and then they went to the laver where they washed that was the outer court then they had five posts where they went from the outer court to the holy place three pieces of furniture in the holy place they had the altar of incense 
they had the table of showbread. And then they had the lampstand, but they were still in the holy place, but not the most holy place. There was a veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place. And only one priest, one time a year, could go before this eternal God, the God of the heavens that you can't even tell if the wind's coming or going. The prophet Isaiah said you cannot even measure the water that's in the palm of his hand. Have you not known? Have you not read Isaiah 40? He's the eternal God. He sits on the circle of the earth and his kingdom rules over all. One priest one time a year could go behind that veil. But the Bible says when Jesus Christ died on Calvary, that veil was ripped in an instant. And now a common man can go behind the veil. A prostitute can go behind the veil. I don't care who you are. You can go behind the veil and you can talk to this one eternal God. And you can make your petitions known. Things happen when you encounter God in prayer. say these things and I want to close out this session because we're headed for something in the next one. In the book of Genesis, I believe it's Genesis 34, we encounter a man by the name of Jacob. Jacob was a deceiver and a supplanter, but he had a hunger for God. We were talking about this over dinner yesterday. Even from the belly, Jacob, Jacob began to grab the foot of Esau. He wanted something more from God. Then they come to the place where Esau went hunting and he was hungry. He said, give me some soup and uh, whatever you're cooking here. Jacob said, sell me your birthright. See, he always had the things of God on his mind. Esau sells the birthright. Then Jacob gets to the point to where, uh, uh, gets to the point to where Isaac is getting ready to die. So he deceives him, put the hair on him and get the blessing. So now he's running from his brother. One of those times when he was running from his brother, the Bible says he encountered a spiritual being. Many theologians believe that it was an angel, but most believe it was God himself. And he began to wrestle with this being until the daybreak. Then all of a sudden, God says to him, let me go. And Jacob says, I will not let you go until you bless me. It was the only time, Pastor, recorded in our Bible where humanity had a hold of divinity and divinity was crying, let me go. When is the last time you had a hold of God and prayer and God told you, let me go? God wants to bring us to such a dimension with him uh, to where we are saturated by him. Jacob had such a hunger for God that God was crying out, let me go. I don't know the last time I prayed until God said, let me go. But if you ever will encounter God to this magnitude, you will come out of playing church. The folk are tired of praying, playing church. I started praying, and I wanted to see the supernatural in my life. I just come out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. 100 people received the Holy Ghost in four days. Went to a little place called Jennings. 17 people got the Holy Ghost. Another place, 18, 19, 10, 11, they just get in the Holy Spirit. I was in a service with one lady. She was eaten up with cancer in both of her breasts. And she had received the Holy Spirit in the service. And I told her boldly, I said, if you get baptized in Jesus' name, the only name under heaven given among men, whereby you must be saved. I said, God's going to let this cancer leave out of your body. You say you speak boldly. They did in the Bible, and so can we. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The woman got baptized in Jesus' name. 
she went to her regular doctor on Tuesday for her surgery to cut her open, to start the chemo and the radiation. The doctor cut her open. But when he cut her open, he found no cancer in her body. He sold her up and sent her home. Don't tell me prayer doesn't work. Prayer will work if you will work it. We've got to get up and start working this prayer. Jacob worked that prayer until he had an encounter with God and he had his whole name changed. Let me help you out today. This church been praying to go to another dimension. This church been praying to see the supernatural. And God wants to do it today. There are some of you in this room, you're so hungry for God, you don't know what to do with yourself. See, we didn't just come to church today. We came to a meeting that was orchestrated by God. When you are filled with this Holy Spirit, you are filled with a praying spirit. There's a mechanism on the inside of you that knows how to talk to God. So if you are filled with the Spirit, you already have something in you that knows how to pray because Jesus was a praying spirit. And you're filled with the Spirit. There are some of you that raised your hand that you want God to fill you because you've never been filled before. I was preaching in Thibodeau, Louisiana, let me tell you how powerful prayer is. And a woman was at the altar. This didn't happen two years ago, five years ago. This just happened two weeks ago. They were beckoning to me because she wanted to be filled. But I was in motion preaching. And I made a marker to come back. When I came back, the woman was gone. I asked the people, where is she? The woman had left the service. I said, get her on the phone. I got the lady on the phone. I said, ma'am, you wanted to receive the Holy Ghost? She said, yes. She said, but I didn't, and I cried all the way home. I said, God is not limited to a building. I said, you can receive the Holy Ghost right where you are. I said, I was on the, Holy, I was on the phone with a woman from Connecticut, and she received the Holy Spirit on the phone, and so can you. Started praying for the woman over the phone. And she got the Holy Ghost over the phone. <laughs> what do you want God to do? What are you hungry for? Or are you going to spend the rest of your life living status quo and mediocre? I want more. I want more of his glory, more of his power, more of his spirit in me. It's time for a demonstration of the supernatural. And in, in the next service, the whole service is going to be about miracles and the supernatural. But in this moment, if you are in this room right now and you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I wonder if you would be bold enough to stand if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with tongues. I've got, they standing. They standing. I'm telling you, people are ready for this more than what we think that they are. Mahakatuba, ikaturi andabo, ayetori andaraba, ikaturi andabo, atotori ababa, ayotori aboshi ataraba, yetori andaraboshi ataraba. Yay God, yay God, yay God, yay God, yay God. Have your way. God's about to fill 
those that want to receive the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit, he's about to fill you right now. Not tomorrow, not two weeks from now, not 10 months from now, but God's about to fill you now. If you would, make your way right here. Come on out of your seat. There you go. I don't blame you. Let me tell you. The woman that had the issue of blood, she pushed through the crowd. She pushed through the feces. She pushed through the dirt. She didn't care what somebody was saying to her. She just started pushing people. I'm talking, she was moving them around because she had to touch Jesus. The greatest miracle that you can ever see is these people getting the Holy Ghost. You want to be an eyewitness of miracles? Then this church is about to see miracles greater than you've ever seen before. I want you to hear me today, those that have come to the altar for the Holy Spirit. We got three, four, five, six, y'all two? Ten. Ten of us here. Thank you. To receive the Holy Spirit is quite simple. High five. Awesome. Do you know that God wants to give you the Holy Ghost more than you want to get it? Do you know that Jesus Christ already took the 39 strife for the healing of your mind. I never speak words to embarrass anyone. God may give me a prophetic word sometimes, but I never speak words to embarrass anyone. But I heard this word of the Lord for you. There's been some things troubling you in your mind that you've not told anyone about. But I, the Lord God, I have come to touch your mind. For I have been with you, and I am there with you. I'm there when you place your head on your pillow at night, and when you awaken the next day. And I am your God, and I will give you peace in your mind. Keep your mind stayed on me, and you shall have perfect peace, saith the Lord. Mahikataba. Mighty God. I just heard the Holy Ghost say that there are many in here searching for answers. He said, tell them I am the answer. Mahikatuba. There are some of you in this place, you have been praying some prayers for decades, and you have not seen the results. But God's about to bring it to you. Bahikataba. Mm. To receive the Holy Spirit. Coming for the Holy Spirit too? Hikataba, you're about to receive it. To receive the Holy Spirit is easy, easy, easy. All you have to do is want it more than you want anything in this world. On it, he's not going to give it to you. He's a, he's a gentleman. He's gentle. You got to want him more than you want anything in this world. More than you want the next heartbeat. God, I need your presence and I need your spirit because I need you, God. I need you. How many of you want it more than you want anything? Lift your hand. You want it more than anything? Lift your hands if you want it more than anything. Awesome. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to see more of this in the next story because others will come to receive. We begin to repent. Why do we repent? Let's go into the word. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. They ask what to do, and so Peter tells them how to receive it. He said the first thing you're going to have to do, you're going to have to repent. Why? When we repent, we just come clean with God and ourselves. We're honest. He says repent. So let's begin to repent. I'm going to repent because guess what's getting ready to happen? Nobody can look at anybody else's sin 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. There's no big eyes and little U's. There's no number two sin and number five sin. It's all sin with God, and all have sinned and fallen short. So let's begin to repent together. Lord, come on, out loud. Lord, here I am, God. You know what I've done. You know what I've said. You know everything about me. Begin to repent. Say, Lord, here I am. Forgive me, God. Everything I've done. Everything I've said. Come on, be. let's keep going. Here I am, God. You know me. You know what I've done. You know what I've said. You know where I have been, God. And God, I want you to feel me. I want you to fill me with your spirit. I want you to fill me with your power, God. Lord, I need the Holy Ghost, and I want the Holy Ghost more than anything. Forgive me, God, of every single solitary thing that I have done, oh God. Lord, I need you today, and I need you to fill me, God. And I want your spirit more than anything. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. God is listening to you. I told you you can pray. I told you you knew how to pray. Pray. I knew you could do it. Now the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to give him some praise. And what I want you to begin to say is hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason why I'm telling you to say hallelujah, because hallelujah is the highest praise. And while you are saying hallelujah, all of a sudden, your mouth is going to start moving. You're not going to be able to stop it. It's going to start sounding like baby talk. Say it anyway. Let the spirit just speak through you any kind of way it wants. Let your mouth move. Let the spirit just take over. It's going to sound like baby talk. Say it anyway. And the only thing I'm getting ready to do is say in the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And you're getting ready to receive it. And I want you to say hallelujah and give God praise with everything that you have. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. That's hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Say hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, they're getting the Holy Ghost. Can I get some help? Hallelujah. 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 No matter what it sounds like. Hallelujah. No matter what it sounds like. That's it. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It sounds like baby talk. Say it anyway. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Just let it happen. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, that's it, ta ta ha ta ta pa pa pa. That's hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, that's hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Go ahead, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, he's speaking in tongues over here. Come on, ta ta pa pa pa. Come on, that's it, let him in. Come on, come on, she's speaking in tongues over here. Come on, hallelujah, call your head up. Hallelujah, no matter what it sounds like. Hallelujah, hallelujah. She's speaking in tongues right here. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. That's hallelujah, baby. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Hold your head up. Hold your head up. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No matter what it sounds like. I don't know. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. No matter what it sounds, there it is. 
get in the Holy Spirit. She's speaking. Keep praying, church. People are still being filled with the Holy Ghost. They are still being filled. We've had a number already to receive and more. Keep praying. Oh, yes, 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 yes. God is filling. God is restoring. God is building. They are being filled. They are being filled. Power of God is still working. Power of God is still moving. Yes, yes, yes.
Rahusha Kataba. Rahusha Kataba. the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with tongues, lift your hand. Just lift your hands. You, you heard yourself speak with tongues. We got one, two, three, four, five. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss anybody? If you've been at this altar and you've been praying and you've not received it, lift your hands. Okay. We got one, two that's still seeking. Don't, we're not, we're not going to let these go. They're going to get anybody else that you've not heard yourself with the evidence of speaking with tongues. We got two that we're waiting on. We got five that have. And you haven't heard yourself. You haven't heard yourself or you did? Oh, she did. Okay. We have two. Anybody else? Three. Not yet. Three to heaven. We're going to be transitioning. And if you, those of you that have been seeking the Holy Spirit, promise me you're not going to stop. Promise me you're not going to stop. Because we're going to go into a deeper level. If, 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 and we're going to follow the pastor here. I'm going to bring a little bit more of the word into miracles and things like that. Because I know that we are and I give the word that God spoke. We already saw five receive the Holy Spirit today. And the other two or three or four, they're going to receive it. We're going to transition. So don't let, I'm going to go right into it. It's going to be as if I haven't stopped. And from this point, I'm going to just go into the next segment that God has given me. And we're going to have what the Lord wants us to have, this mighty revival. Pastor, I'll just bring it to you. God, let's continue in this mode of worship and the praise team will come. We're going to get our praise on for a bit and then we're going to hear from the word of the Lord again. Praise God. <laughs> 